TheMesh.TV, an online network of original free audio and video shows based out of Western North Carolina, reaching the entire world. Listen and watch through iTunes or through the website TheMesh.TV. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the RealTailgate.com college football hangout. This is a Google Hangout sponsored by Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue. I'm your host, Big J Waldo. We have Ben Swain in our producer's chair, and we have the folks over at Talking Moose Media on the technical side. You can join us every Wednesday right here, live at 9.30 p.m., as Ben, myself, and a rotating set of panelists discuss college football right here in North Carolina. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue, and they want me to remind you it's just not a tailgate without the barbecue. Log on to realtailgate.com for special offers, a list of locations, archived editions of this hangout, and you can download the realtailgate.com college football podcast. This week, back again, the stalwart, the very post that supports our formidable presence on the internet, Ben Swain from the Walk-Ons, a returning visitor, Brian Barber from Tar Heel Blog, Depressedly here, J.P. Mundy from SB Nation's blogger So Dear. We also have our super special last-minute fill-in guest, Joe Ovius from The Fan. We also have Sean Crest from the Bottom of the Pile podcast. How's everybody doing? Pretty good, man. Good. Hopefully you feel exalted. Based on those intros. Well, though I didn't, I didn't think, uh, I didn't think your intro had focus. I didn't feel like there was a lot of energy there. I think we need to have a players only meeting and, and talk this out. <laughs> please, please, I'm dying for that kind of attention, man. I, I mean, I, I think you guys are taking this too lightly. So. <laughs> Personally, I plan on getting some shots up after the show, so I'm, I'm doing my part. In the dark. I'm flying a banner over Waldo's house right now saying, bring the energy. <laughs> bring the energy. All right. Did everybody enjoy this weekend's college football? No. <laughs> I did. Let me, think, let me think about that a minute. No. Okay. That Just Brian Barber, the world's biggest, well, no. no. He's kind of a UNC fan. I don't want to oversell you, especially right before you take them to task over this performance against East Carolina. But it was, in my opinion, great game between two North Carolina football schools. Um, what are your thoughts, Brian? I was thinking this. This is why Carolina has no business playing this game, because you know this sort of thing happens, and then that's you know yeah you, know, you got to deal with all the ESU fans. <laughs> I do take I do take care of you. I left the goalpost intact. I, I am I'm very happy about that. Though. <laughs> That's a rarity for East Carolina. I, I heard they, uh, they I heard they turned the scoreboard off right after the game as well. So, so well no, you don't, no, you don't you want, no no photos. I surprised <laughs> Steve Spur surprised Steve Spur didn't show up just to take the photo. <laughs> hey Brian, can, can I ask you a question about UNC? Sure. I, I was kind of thinking. I was kind of thinking about this today, and it, and it struck me that I really do think this is true. Um, UNC as a football program becomes more interesting the more they lose. The more they win, they become less interesting, and in because they never reach that that uh, you know get off of that plateau where they're where they're in the nationally relevant field, right? But the more they lose, it, it keeps coming up with that question of why are they not elite? You just it, all the pieces are there, and it just it drives me crazy to think about why UNC is an elite. But you, you know, you lose to ECU this weekend against Virginia Tech is huge. If they lose that game, that Miami game on Thursday night becomes even more interesting. Am I, am I wrong in that? Does UNC become more interesting the more they lose? I I, I think it's it's become constantly a thing where yeah, you ask that question, why doesn't this work out, and and you know they had it going into Mac Brown, and then decided to to give the give it, to listen to the players and give it to Carl Torbush. 
they they fire and hire and fire him three times or something, then bring John Bunning in, and then and, and so it's been this you know, decade in the desert. So they go out and get Butch Davis, which you know immediately ramps up the recruiting, but he brings in John Blake and all the wrong sort, sorts of players, and they get in NCAA trouble. Yeah, it's, there's there's a really big what if game you could play if what if the NCAA what if the NCAA never shows up in 2010, and what if that that team takes the field because going into that season before we knew all hell was going to break loose, you know we knew the defense could be really good, but there were lots of questions. Well, can TJ Yates you know be good enough? Turns out he was good enough. He was throwing for 400 yards. He cut down the interception. So. There was this big what if that the payoff was going to come in 2010 and then the NCAA trouble happened. And so now we're in this process of they've got to rebuild the momentum. They've got to, you know, they've got to pick up the pieces. And he's got to, you know, you're in this weird transition year now where they, they've had some, they've got most of their top shelf talent from, from three years ago is, is gone. The, the class in 2012 wasn't very good. He's got a good class last year. He's got a good class this year, but it's just going to take some time to rebuild. And I'm betting once they get to the point where they're they got some traction, Fedora's going to get hired and go somewhere else. Did you just take us all the way back to Mac Brown? Yeah, well, yeah, you you have to. I mean, it's it's like it's 1997. Toilets for Bob Stoops, the way I understand it. So you mentioned you mentioned Fedora going somewhere else. Do you guys think he's acting like a coach right now who's bothered by his team not playing well? Is he acting like a guy that is okay because he's got options? No, I I thought I thought when I turned on the press conference on Monday and I, I pulled the video, he looked like a man beaten. He looked depressed. He looked like he hadn't slept. But then again, if you drink nine Red Bulls a day, I guess you don't sleep <laughs> much at all as it is. So. But he just it, it was a different look for him as far as his like his energy level and the way he usually presents himself. I, I, I really think he's really troubled by what happened on Saturday more more than maybe he would be had they lost by a field goal or a touchdown or something. Yeah, he looked a lot like Jim Grove did you know, on Tuesday at his press conference and you know, ACC fans, that's bad if you hadn't figured that out. I tell you am this. I the only one, am I the only one here that thinks we're kind of overreacting to a one-off bad game from... The only reason why the East Carolina-North Carolina game became what it is is because East Carolina was the one doing the beatdown. Brian, I think you would agree that if, uh, if East Carolina wasn't the opponent on the other end and the same thing happens, say it's an out-of-state opponent, we're not having the level of freakout that we've been having this week. I, I think it would depend on the caliber of the opponent. If it had been another conference USA school that did that, it had been a, a school. My, my my biggest qualms have been that the the defense just played so badly. It was just yeah. such a, a but we such knew a the defense was going to be bad this year. I know, but but they I'm, got I'm worse looking. from last year because they lost guys, and we know they can't tackle. Yeah. So what are we surprised by when it comes to the defense? I, I think it was, it was just the ease at which ECU did anything they wanted. That mm -hmm. that was, you know, even one thing if they had forced ECU to to punt, you know, three or four times, and 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 maybe you had seen signs of like forcing some third and longs or something. Right. But it was like a, a, a guy who uh, the the guy the running back his name escapes me right now runs for 161 yards in three games, shows up in Keenan runs for 186 on 36 carries. It's like, yeah, oh my goodness. Like yeah, Vintavious Cooper hadn't really done anything. I think he had rushed for 100 and what, close to 140 yards, I think, or something like that. 100, 161 in three games. Oh, okay. and then, yeah, yeah, I've got it. Yeah, this is all burned in my memory now because I'm, <laughs> I'm watching this unfold and I look it up. And I'm like, are you kidding me, really? But yeah, it's just, it's just, it was so bad that mm -hmm. it, there's, there's just a sense of, I mean, good Lord, what's? I mean, they're going to make Logan Thomas look like a first round draft pick on Saturday. Is what it feels like, and it's going to. Um, Logan Thomas is still Logan Thomas, though. He threw for th over 300 against them last year. So, any idea, to, any notion that he won't do the same thing? Yeah, maybe. Well, not. I mean, it is a it is a Virginia Tech. So, what do you what do you expect yeah. this weekend then? Well, what, I, do you uh, want? what do you want? What would make you happy outside of a win? <laughs> <laughs> 
be, be competitive. I mean, just a, just yeah, have, in, have a, like in a debilitating, humiliating loss, what would make you happy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I guess you just want to feel like they're competitive. You feel like they're they're doing some things right because against these you they could do nothing right. I mean, even Brent Renner who. Who, who remember way back when he started his career, he went like through what thirty passes without an inter, without an incompletion or something, and now he could he couldn't hit anyone. I mean, he's got you know he he threw the, the touchdown to Nick Platt. He threw over. I think he was throwing it to someone else, and and so it's just there's just this sense of everything going wrong, and and it would be nice just to have some things go right, and and we'll and you know baby steps, man. Just you know don't get blown out or is how it feels at this point. We're going to do a group support session for Brian here. And we're going to go around the horn, and everybody's going to say something positive about UNC's performance. <laughs> Sean, give me, give me one, give me some little crumb, something positive about UNC on last Saturday. This is why I don't get invited to interventions because I have nothing positive to say about UNC's performance <laughs> on Saturday. And the worst part they wasn't even what happened. The money somehow. The worst part wasn't even what happened on the field. It was that they've got a dumpster fire in their locker room. You have A.J. Blue talking about people yeah. not being 100% ready. You have Larry Fedora saying he was on the sidelines. It wasn't his fault. And then on Monday, completely changing his tune and, and trying something different when that didn't go over well. And then today, you've got the defensive coordinator saying that nobody's listening to him, and it's like fighting a heavyweight champion to try and coach these guys. So no, I I can't I can't get in on, on helping out Brian's. I'm sorry, Brian, but yeah, go out on that ledge. There's there's nothing, nothing good coming this weekend. Wow, Joe, can you can you like uh, give us the opposite end of that spectrum? Because that was pretty far down in the depths there. Hey, uh, military appreciation day looked pretty cool on Saturday. <laughs> helmets uh, helmets look good. Uh, I like what they did with the end zone. Um, they DJ shut down the gorge, Joe. DJ Forge was on the ones and twos again. So Brian, I mean, is this making that it was work? good? I, I was really trying not. to I was trying to spread a little love here, show a little love for for you and well for you, and and uh, it doesn't seem to be going over going over too big. Should we stop? Well, we should, well, yeah, we should talk about Wake. They're they're, they're yeah, even more miserable than we are. <laughs> Brian, that's what I was gonna say. Is the one good thing is that you're not wake. That's that's the one the one good thing that I could that I could say. The uh, the days of Knife flying banners over Park. Keenan are over. Yeah, it's all over at uh, over at Wake now. The tailgate special from Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue. It's eight pieces of chicken, a pint of barbecue, any two sides, two dozen hush puppies, and a whole gallon of tea. Just go to realtailgate.com for details, coupons, and a list of locations that open early on game day. JP, as a Wake fan, as a guy that covers Wake, give us give us your like. Don't go so far back as Mac Brown. But, <laughs> I was going John. But like Mac your emotional state prior to the game and and how it changed like quarter to quarter. See, that's the thing. I'm not so mad at the football. I'm kind of mad at the expectations of the fan base as a whole. Because the question I've been trying to get answered all week is, how did we get here? Five years ago, you know, Jim Grove and Ron Wilman were the toasts of the town. Um, folks at, at Arkansas were talking to Grove. He was the number one coach, and all of a sudden, he can't coach at all. There's so much anger. It's not that people are just dissatisfied with the product. You know, it's pretty obvious. This, we're working on five straight losing seasons, which shouldn't be acceptable anywhere. But it's Wake Forest. You know, before he got there, he I think the the historical winning percentage was somewhere around 200, and Grove's somewhere hovering around 500. At Wake Forest, that's pretty good. But no, five straight losing seasons is bad. Now, that's one part of it. But the other part is that you've got so much anger coming uh, from the fan base right now that, I, I, you know, somebody help me out here. I think it's misguided. So I, I'm not real upset with the product on the field. I think there's seven games left. They can get better, um, and if they don't, then... The people who hire and fire, you know, may make a change. It may be Grobe. It may be just the offensive coordinator. Um, hint, it should be the offensive coordinator. But, <laughs> it, it, you know, what's got my dander up so much over the past couple of weeks is just the level of, of, of hate and the personal attacks I see against a guy who, guys, I don't think he's forgotten how to coach. I, I just think he's just going through a rough season. 
Yeah, there's been a correction uh, at Wake Forest football that just happens to coincide with Wake Forest being in an ACC that's a heck of a lot better in 2013 than it was mm -hmm. back in 2006. That's not to say that the Demon Deacons didn't have a really good team or a stretch of good teams there with actual NFL talent. But you notice that Clemson and Florida State are theoretically back. Teams like Wake Forest, traditional under 500 teams, are going to have that correction that goes along with it. I think the anger that's going on in Winston-Salem, and I'm not any sort of you know Wake Forest insider by any means, but it just seems that the opinion on Ron Wellman has been made, very similar to what happened at NC State with Lee Fowler. didn't matter what happened, what was going on, who was winning, who was losing, you were going to find ways to guide your argument towards how this AD needs to go. That's not to say that Ron Wellman doesn't deserve to go. I mean, how basketball has been handled from the death of Skip Prosser Ron has been pretty bad, and Jeff Bizdelic still having a job after this whole business about results being the reason why Dino Gaudio was fired doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's just that I don't think fans know how to place that anger now, so they're taking any means they possibly can with banners and ads and everything else to make an otherwise good argument against Ron Wellman ridiculous to the point where it's coming back to them. It's coming back to the, wait a minute, you're Wake Forest. Why are you freaking out over football, dropping back a little bit? Relax. That, that's where the big mistakes are. They're, they're making such a spectacle of it that it's not about the actual story about Ron Wellman. It's now about you. See, and what happens is, is the, the most vocal part of the fan base it listens to what Joe says, and they say, well, that's just little old Wake Forest speak. Well, guys, little old Wake Forest is actually a real thing when it comes to football. I believe that Wake Forest should and can absolutely compete on a year-to-year -year basis on a national level. Not for Final Fours, national championships, but they should be very more than competitive in the ACC basketball-wise. Football, you've got a completely different animal. And, you know, if, if Jim Grobe goes 7-5 and five every year, or five, you know, throw in a couple of 5-7s and sevens or whatever, you know, as a lifelong resident of Winston-Salem, I'm going to go ahead and say that's pretty darn good. Uh, but, you know, they've got this idea of little old Wake Forest, and now what happened in 2006 should be a more regular occurrence. I think there's a lot of things to play here. First of all, let's talk about Arkansas. So they flirted with Grove, they flirted with Butch Davis, and they went out and hired Bobby Petrino. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next topic. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the second thing about, uh, about Wake is you know you're you're, you're spot on you're, you're spot on JP and that, and that the the expectations are a little bit out of whack um, it, from a football perspective right you know being around Duke football for a long time I fully understand that six wins is 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 phenomenal that's a reason to go out and 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 have a parade like some other schools have done in Raleigh um, but uh, <laughs> it was you know, a pep rally band. Uh, it was, there was no parade? No, I, I remember parade. a parade. Yeah. I was there. It was a pep rally. Um, but, it, but I think uh, I, I think I think the what's at the root of this and and what these uh, the boosters that are spending all of this money buying ads in the news and record during the ACC tournament or billboards on the side of I forty or flying airplane banners, they're perpetuating the image of Wake that they don't want because what's getting out there is hey we're Wake Forest pay attention to us. And the story that gets out is, guys, look at this ridiculous tiny little school in Winston-Salem that thinks they're a football program. That's the story that's getting out, and they're going out about it the wrong way. Um, they need to start paying players. You know, if the boosters want to want to spend money, well, let's pay some recruits, get some better players in there, um, get some national attention in that way, maybe get like a multi-part uh, SI special on them. I think that would help out a little bit with, with the media. Um, because the NCAA isn't going to do anything, right? So oh yeah, uh, this is the perfect time to do. You know, if, if I'm if I'm uh, you know rich R.J. Reynolds tobacco man in Winston Salem, I'm I'm paying high school players. When, when's when's John Blake show calls due up? <laughs> does does it matter? I mean, does it matter? Let's get him in now, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Butch Davis is probably about to be done in Tampa, and he's probably ready for a job. So you know, bring bring Davis. No, and no, no, he's just he's just waiting for that Buccaneers job to open up when Greg Schiano finally gets canned. <laughs> Butch is in a great spot Kiano. right now. Butch is yeah. in a great spot right now. <laughs> Does it is it just me or does anybody else think that you know they started with the the newspaper ads? and voice their displeasure creatively during the ACC tournament. 
Then they put up a fire whelming billboard on a remote part of US 52 in June or whatever. It was, wasn't in season. And now they're going to fly a banner on Saturday, and it just feels to me like it's just something that they can, you know, do and like high five each other after after it's done. It doesn't really do anything. Ben, I think well, you, I think you made a point a couple months ago in something I wrote that what's the end game here, and and I don't know what the answer to that is. Well, it's pretty obvious that um, I'm going to send my kids to Wake Forest because they have disposable income at a time when everybody's kind of suffering economic-wise. <laughs> that they can just kind of roll out cash for these billboards and newspaper ads, and I'm guessing a flying banner probably costs some money too. But um, what's the end game? We know what the end game is. The end game is to draw attention to Ron Wellman and get him fired. They're just going about it in a way that was not even NC State fans did. NC State fans usually get the, get the knock for being the crazy fans, the ones that will swarm on social media, the ones that will go nuts on sports talk radio, that kind of stuff, the radio fire guy in a heartbeat. I never saw an aerial banner fly around Carter Finley Stadium. I never saw a billboard that uh, said it was time to fire Lee Fowler or Sidney Lowe or any of that stuff. So Wake is taking it to a, to a new level. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Go ACC. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day when it was the Pack Pride guys that caused administrative change over at UNC, and it's the Wake guys that are flying banners trying to get people out of Dodge. But do you do you all taste that? Do you taste the delicious irony of what's going on at Wake Forest, especially this weekend with NC State coming in town? Because we're about five years removed from when NC State fans, or specifically websites like State Fans Nation, wrote long love letters to Ron Wellman as an AD. Brian, you remember that? You got oh yeah, that was yeah. It was. Yeah, I mean, it was we're hilarious. talking about directors' cups, and Ron Wellman's the man, and we need AD with vision like that, huh? Kind of funny how that works out about five years later. Are these legitimate people? No, probably not. If they were legitimate people, they wouldn't be going through these means to get rid of a guy. All this stuff would be happening behind the scenes, and Ron Wellman would be out of a job. Right. You know, shouldn't, an airplane that... banner, shouldn't an airplane banner be a kind of a guerrilla attack? The thing that bothered me the most is that they're sending out press releases saying they're going to do it. Because, I mean, how are you How are you going to make any kind of impact with this banner unless Jeff Bizdelic is flying the plane? I don't see how the banner itself is going to be a, is going to make an impact this weekend. Yeah, I, yeah, I, got, I, yeah, I, I got, tw I got tweeted at. I got tweeted at with the, ju the, Google's, the Google's doc justification for the firing of Raw Web. I'm like... Yeah. Why are you tweeting this at me? I don't care. <laughs> I talked to some guys over in the administrative uh, in the administration over at Wake Forest the other day, and you know the message boards will say, "Oh, they're shaking in their boots," and they're not. There's nothing that they can do. They don't care about this. You know, everybody everybody already knows that the basketball and football programs aren't doing well. This isn't new news. How powerful are the uh, the boosters at Wake? It depends. It depends. The real money guys are the ones that have been behind Wellman this entire time. For rock football buddies. Yeah. Chilling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad JP jumped in there because when you said how powerful, I all of a sudden thought weightlifting. And I didn't remember anybody particularly <laughs> like <clears throat> from Wake. But, you know, I could be wrong. Hey, uh, Cress, speaking of getting fired, how does Jim Knowles have a job at Duke still? <laughs> well, he told us that before the season, that the, that the defense had lost and they weren't going to be able to compete with offenses this year. So um, I guess because he was honest about it going into the season, they, they're giving him a little bit more rope. Has he gone with the Bryn Renner, uh, my hands are sweaty excuse? <laughs> I you, have you not heard about hand sweat yet. That, that okay. was one of the best excuses that I've heard in, in, in a long time with the hand sweat excuse, though. <laughs> Theoretically. Hands during a football game? <clears throat> wow. Chris, I was just it's... wondering, in, in two years when, when Cutcliffe, you know, doesn't get back to the Belk Bowl or doesn't get back to a bowl, do the Duke fans turn on him like Wake Forest fans have on Grove? Well, that, that's what I was trying. I was thinking about um, as you were as you were going through everything because yeah, it was, Duke's pretty much a few years behind Wake Forest right now. Um, I think if the basketball t team takes a downturn, if Kay leaves and, and his replacement isn't up to the standards, then I think Cutcliffe may may be kind of collateral damage from that. But I think like Wake Forest, it's going to be anger over the basketball program 
that spills over into football that would cause Cutcliffe a problem. Otherwise, I don't think they care that much about the football program enough to enough to bother spending money on a plane. Yeah, but yeah, there would be what was on Inside Carolina, uh, not Inside Carolina, on the Devil's Den last season. Yeah. When they didn't look when they went on that tailspin. Weren't there people like, well, yeah. Cutcliffe's clearly taking this team as far as they can go. It's time to go for somebody young, bring some life in the program. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that happening on uh, Devil's Den, Ben? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, there, that, there, were, there were some message board crackpots. Yeah, that, that were saying <laughs> that on that. That's, that's the point that I, that I was about to make. Is I, I think those guys are there now. So this uh, <laughs> this past weekend of the Troy game, uh, Duke is in a stretch. Over 85 minutes of football, they'd scored 90 points, and the fans behind me were yelling at the at the offensive coordinator to to get fired because they didn't like the play calling. <laughs> so so you've got you've got a, a faction of Duke fans. <laughs> Who will never be happy because they're so conditioned to to hate everything about Saturdays, uh, and then you've got the other faction that just doesn't care. So uh, I don't think you'll see any change in attitude towards Cutcliffe. I think it is what it is. I think you've got folks that hate him now, and I think you've got folks that don't care. And you know, quite honestly, who's who's Duke going to get? Right? If, if Cutcliffe can't win at Duke, who can? So. Uh, I think uh, I think the AD is a little bit smarter than that to, to, to go down that route. Isn't Just that a question of money, Ben? I mean, going back to a couple of previous conversations on previous shows, I mean, isn't that just a question of money? And Duke's got plenty of that, right? What to to pay a, a big name to come in? Is that what you're yeah, saying? I mean, they're not going to get you know Les Miles or or you know uh, whatever that guy is at Alabama, uh, but. But you know, to to really shell out some some clams for somebody. I mean, they're they're paying Cutcliffe what close to three million, Sean? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, so they're 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 paying that money now. They're not they're not gonna they're not gonna pay somebody. I mean, they, they might get Lane Kiffin on the cheap, right? Well, when bad gamblers get in that situation, they double down. Six million. I they, yeah, I hope they don't hire Lane Kiffin because I I would hate for him to be left at RDU. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice airport, though. Now, it's a nice place to be. It's right? not walking distance to anything, though. <laughs> that outlet mall out there is not worth visiting. You can see, I can see Lane Kiffin wandering on the Lumbly Road and not knowing where to go. So, you know, it, it would be a strip mall worth visiting if Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue was there. Oh, just That's saying. A sponsor, you may not be welcome back, Joe. Just saying. <laughs> I want to move it a little closer to the triangle. <laughs> they have stores so, in Wake Forest, Fuqua Arena. That's right. So Jarn. if Smithfield moves there, then Lane Kiffin would come coach in the Seriously. triangle. Seriously. Yeah. Duke could double down. I wonder if, if, if that's what gets Duke to a like five-year run of 500-plus seasons in football, would they kick down for Smithfield? Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I tell you what, the think advantage the that Duke has. Think of the recruiting opportunities. Yeah, exactly. The the advantage that Duke has that Wake doesn't is Duke is in the, in the coastal, and they they don't have Florida State, Clemson in the in the next year Louisville. They don't have to face those guys. Um, so that you know that's that's one thing that is really going against Wake right now. Joe alluded to this is the upswing, not just of the league but of the Atlantic. Um, it, you know, even even next year getting even better with Louisville coming in. Yeah, but Greensboro does have a Smithfields now, so that should give us a recruiting advantage over any team in the Coastal. Over Syracuse, for sure. That's huge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't imagine. Well, you know, hey, Smithfields, maybe Syracuse, New York, is hankering a Smithfields. Man, those hush puppies will keep you warm in the cold winter. Just saying. I don't think they hanker in Syracuse. No, they don't not. hanker? No. no, they don't not, feel not that there. strongly. No. <laughs> they mainly just complain about their football team. <laughs> I don't, I don't think isn't that the overall point, though? Is that nobody's immune to this? You can go to any fan base in the country, no matter mm -hmm. how small the school size might be, and you talk to a couple people, and they'll be upset. The difference now between ten years ago is that that vocal minority has more outlets to complain. It used to be that the, the the most damage you could do about 10 to 15 years ago was to write a letter to the editor. You were at the uh, you were at the control of an editor to select your one letter 
and then sometimes they would just post it to clown you. And then you had sports even talk. Then, like, though, even then, though, it was, you know, you got three letters. Yeah. Two of them are for guys that from guys that are saying, yeah, it's okay. And the other guy's ranting. Which one mm -hmm. are you going to publish? You're going to publish the one that's ranting. Yeah, the squeaky wheel. So, and then you got that. And then, okay, you had the coaches' shows. If the coaches' shows were smart, they would screen out the, the lunatic callers. Occasionally, ones would get through. Steve Logan had incredible lunatic callers that would call on the East Carolina show back in the day. I remember those vividly because I was running the board for them as a part-timer. Uh, at one point in time, NC State used to take phone calls on their show, but then uh, there was somebody that yelled, pack your bags to Tom O'Brien early on. We don't want you to pack your bags. <laughs> they stopped taking phone calls. Um, I mean, you, the outlet for these types of things was very limited. Sports talk was at a point where nobody took it all that seriously. It was just kind of these, one of these, they don't take it that seriously now, but it was even worse 10 to 15 years ago. But now with message boards and Twitter, Facebook campaigns, Google Hangouts and everything else, you can highlight these people a lot easier. And then, there's, you know, and people like Ben and Sean who live on Twitter all day, just like me, uh, <laughs> they'll tell you easily that it's a vacuum. I mean, it's just this little bubble where everybody gets all worked up, and the actual outcry isn't as big as you probably think it is once you log off from Twitter. Yeah, I mean, I think that the Wake Forest fan base pretty much all agrees on the same thing. Well, uh, basketball is screwed up. It probably has a lot to do with Ron Wellman. You know, football's not doing well, but we've got a, a faction that just seems to want to have the loudest voice, and, the, and that's not just – that's not unique to Wake Forest, as you said. You know, everybody's got one. Who logs off of Twitter? I do occasionally. <laughs> Can you? Yeah. I thought it came to your phone and stuff. I mean... All I know is I'm glad I have a block button for all these people that tweet at me so I could just, you know, get them off my timeline. <laughs> So we've spent the last three or four minutes shooting down customers, social media, and fans. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Success. <laughs> I think the Twitter handle you want to deal with people is Real Tailgate. You need to go straight to them. Real Tailgate. I think they're equipped to handle all questions and concerns. And complaints. Uh, and they love interacting with the public. I've got a question for Joe, actually. Joe, what is your, you know, from a 30,000-foot level, what do you think the influence of message boards like um, Inside Carolina and the Pack Pride and the OG boards, uh, how much influence do they have these days? Um, probably just about as much influence as they had five years ago or as much <laughs> influence as you might have with Twitter or email campaigns. Yeah, I think, I think it's just too easy to get caught up in... I mean, I see... I'll go to the message boards. I've made no secret about the fact that I go to message boards. I've been doing it for 10 years. Um, and it's the same people posting. It's, it's, it's the same 10 to 15 people in a thread going back and forth. And you have a lot of lurkers. But those lurkers are just checking it out for amusement purposes or just to kind of get a, a vibe as to what's going on. As far as actual interaction goes on message boards... I have, a, I have a bizarre tie-in here, okay? Okay. <laughs> and I, I don't mean to throw my anybody under the bus, but my father-in-law is a graduate of Virginia Tech and a veteran of the armed services of the United States of America, and I have a lot of respect for him. He good. is addicted but. <laughs> to Virginia Tech football message boards, <laughs> and it directly influences his decisions on how much money to spend on the program. I'm not joking. I don't think he would deny it even. It's, yeah, I mean, it's not a joke. To it, him, that's very serious. Okay. Look, sports does crazy things to otherwise smart people, and message yes. boards are a part of that, but it's... I don't... The, the real movers and shakers are the ones that actually donate a ton of money. You know, it wasn't until, like at NC State specifically, until Wendell Murphy finally signed off on certain things not to happen that, uh, that you start to see some change. I mean, that's the stuff that matters. Um, so there's like four people influencing that. Yeah. I mean, isn't that true just about any walk of life? So what about the people, what about the people emailing Debbie Yale? Do you not believe in the Illuminati? Come on, man. Just a small group of people calling all the shots. 
I'm trying to jazz this thing up, but holy mackerel. I just went I can't there with that. Illuminati. <laughs> you know what, though, guys? We, we do have an example here in our area of a message board and getting a coach fired, right? That's we're true. Talking about, we're talking about Butch Davis getting fired because of the mm-hmm. NC State message boards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. no. I don't know, no, no. Butch Davis, Actually, Butch, Butch Davis, Davis got, got fired because he was dirty. Butch Davis, but. Butch Davis got fired because at the end of the day, things got a little too, a uh, little too salty between him and Holden Thorpe, not because of a message board. Yeah, uh, it, if, that was that was yeah, that was so, Holden Thorpe. So if, if, if Pat Pride never finds the plagiarism, it, is is that saltiness there? What between Holden Thorpe and Butch Davis? Yeah. Um, no, that, just, that 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 saltiness that started. That that started. You got to remember that um, not too long before he got fired, or a week before he got fired, it, the the tipping point was because of a scholarship offer to his kid, not right. because of mm-hmm. McAdoo or anything like that. And let the record show that Holden Thorpe actually has a secondary violation under his yeah. name, which Davis yeah. doesn't have any. By the way, <laughs> I, just, yeah. I just want the I just want the record to state that. No, if if North Carolina had to do it all over again, knowing what they know now and the way the NCAA handles itself and yeah. how the SEC goes about their business, mm-hmm. if they were smart, Butch Davis would probably would have still have been the head coach during that time, but they got so spooked about their reputation, the academics and the agent business and everything else, that they just started having to cut everything off, that we saw Dick Bedore early retirement, we saw Butch Davis gone, torched a year, uh, and then eventually Holden Thorpe had to go find another job where he doesn't have to worry about sports, so good for him. Well, even before that, you have to oh, let's let's open everything up and yeah. let's go look in every corner there is. And like, no, no, you just you make it about Marvin Olsen and Greg Little, and that's your discussion. Hey, Robert Quinn, hand your phone over, shall you? You think they do that over at Alabama? You think they no. do that at uh, at any other SEC school? They don't say they don't have a player. You think Johnny Manziel was told by the school, "Hey, uh, Johnny, can you open up your bank account?" Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it was just it was just got to a point where the their 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 need to protect the reputation overwhelmed their sense of hey you know what we could probably block these guys if we're just smart about it they were so scared of not cooperating but how, how lucky are we that they fans. opened up uh, Marcus Page's locker though right they don't, they don't <laughs> open up locker you know P- PJ is going to suffocate that. PJ PJ Harrison should not be joking around at this time <laughs> he really shouldn't. I, can't, I think it's I can't. a serious time right now at Carolina. The image is gone. He shouldn't be making jokes. He should be sulking in a corner thinking about what he did. He's not you learning know, his lesson. You know, and I can't wait for the first, you know, like when he goes like three for 12 or something and misses five threes. They go, well, if he didn't, he'd didn't, have been practicing instead of playing practical jokes on Marcus Page, he wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're off the rails here. What do you think? <laughs> All right, guys. I I want to make sure everybody's had their said their piece here. I don't want to cut anybody off, especially you know anybody who wants to say anything positive about Saturday's performance by UNC's football team. Anybody? I thought that it was a great job by Carolina to fill up Keenan Stadium. Even though there was must have been a color problem on the television I was watching because it was a darker shade of bluish purple that I so I'm just might have been the TV started emptying about 12 minutes in too I think <laughs> the, the referees only allowed one play to be run after the quarter had expired so that's pretty good <laughs> yeah Ben and I were talking about that we he was he was clearly pulling for that to be a touchdown so whatever decision got made after that was going to piss somebody off. Yeah. All right. I, I got one quick parting shot, Waldo. Okay, go ahead. We're going to wrap uh, it up. We're going to do parting shots. We'll start with you. I'm talking to you, Syracuse. You play Clemson this weekend? You know what to do. Do the right thing. <laughs> Think about it. Go ACC. Disgraceful. Brian Barber. Right. Uh, I'm I'm all out, man. I'm done. I just I just gotta be I just gotta be depressed over here about the you know giving up sixty points to Logan Thomas from Saturday. <laughs> wow, depressed about future events. That's that's brutal. 
Why why be depressed about the past when you could be depressed about the future? <laughs> I guess, you know. There's bound to be an optimist pessimist thing there somewhere. Uh, JP, parting shot. Coach Dorn. North Carolina State has not beaten Wake Forest and Winston-Salem since 2001. There's nothing that you can do about it. Phillip Rivers came here. T.O.B. came here. It doesn't matter. You can wear red shoes. It's going to happen. Acceptance is the key to progress. Have a good trip. Wow, strong words. <laughs> strong words. Joe... Can you give us, like, a sort of semi-short parting shot? No. Okay. <laughs> John Crest. I'm just kidding. Yes. Joe, seriously, give us something to go out thinking about. Before we Wait, you didn't ask for it? You, you didn't ask for it? Here's something positive for Wake fans. With the government shutdown, Wake Forest will have the only flyover this weekend. Oh. <laughs> That's brutal. Uh, that's good though that's funny that's funny alright guys uh, big thank you to everybody um, it's, uh, our guests and especially our sponsors uh, again I want to remind you it's just not a tailgate without the barbecue make sure you go to the real tailgate website at realtailgate.com you can get the college football podcast there you can also get it at TheMesh.tv. You can also get it at iTunes. Um, I'm your host, Jay Waldo. I had to think about that for a second. Um, for um, Smithfields and Ben Swain, our producer, thanks, good night, we'll see you next week. The tailgate special from Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue. It's eight pieces of chicken, a pint of barbecue, any two sides, two dozen hush puppies, and a whole gallon of tea. Just go to realtailgate.com for details, coupons, and a list of locations that open early on game day. TheMesh.tv an online network of original free audio and video shows based out of Western North Carolina. Reaching the entire world. Listen and watch through iTunes or through the website, themesh.tv.